Well, folks, Mr. Bergman here. We've been talking about thunderstorms, and we're going to learn about kind of the next stages of a thunderstorm's life. Pretty fascinating stuff. i got some really cool videos to show you, too, as we go through this. So, hey, take, let's get at it. Hey, before we can truly understand thunderstorms, we do need to understand a little bit about the atmosphere. turns out the atmosphere has several layers to it. The first layer is called the troposphere, the lowest level down here. And as you get higher, the temperature gets lower. If you look at the scale, it's kind of important to understand, is the higher you go, the lower the temperature. Now, those of us who live in the mountains understand that. The higher you go, it's colder up in the mountains than it is higher. But it turns out as you get to a certain point, about 10 kilometers above the Earth, the temperature flattens out. And this is called the tropopause. And as that point goes up, as it goes higher and higher, the temperature actually begins to rise. Now, it's still chilly, OK? And this is called the stratosphere. And then, it, well, it flattens out again, and this is called the stratopause. And then if you go higher yet, um, the temperature drops even further to a very, very cold temperature in what's called the mesosphere. And then the temperature rises again at the mesopause, and then it rises in the thermosphere. Now, all of our weather, OK, all of the weather happens in the troposphere. So when we think about uh, the sky, this is really what we think about. This is getting close up here. The thermosphere is approaching space. There's also what's called the exosphere up higher, and that's really practically in space. So this is the air that's above us. That is our atmosphere, OK? So let's briefly talk about the tropopause. The tropopause is the portion of the atmosphere next to the Earth's surface in which the temperature generally decreases rapidly with altitude, all right? All weather occurs here. I already kind of visited about that. The higher you go, the lower the temperature goes. I meant lower the temperature here, not it gets. Lower the temperature gets. All right. Now, we know that, especially those of us who live here in Woodland Park. Here is uh, Pikes Peak, and if you've been top Pikes Peak, it's cold up there, right? Well, here's actually kind of a, if you were at sea level at 59 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, relatively warmish, cool day, I don't know, whatever. If you go to 2,000 feet, 51, you can see the temperature dropping. Here in Woodland Park, we live at 8,500 feet, and so if it was 59 degrees at sea level, we would be somewhere near, you know, I don't know what you call that, 20-some degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So it, it, the higher you go, the colder it gets. All right. Now, that's assuming that um, at sea level is 59. It changes day to day. But roughly, the idea, by the way, is for every 1,000 feet, pardon me, 2,000 feet, it's about 7 degrees Fahrenheit change. And actually, if you live in Woodland Park and you drive down Collar Springs, you know that's about a 7 degree temperature change on most days because we're about 2,000 feet above above Colorado Springs. So you probably didn't know that, but now you do. Hey, let's talk about the tropopause. The pause, that's the top boundary of the troposphere. This is where the temperature flattens. So remember in our diagram here, at the tropopause, see how the temperature uh, stays constant right down here? That's called the tropopause. Now that's important to understand, because as you get a thunderstorm, remember we're talking about thunderstorms, and we get this uh, this flattening out. Remember, this is this is a convection cell, right? And as it flattens out, we kind of get a flat spot at the top. Why does it reach a flat spot? Because actually, it's risen to the level of the tropopause, and when it reaches to that level, it can't uh, go farther because now all of a sudden the temperature starts to warm up because it's it's dependent upon being cold. So this right here, the top of this shape, this cool shaped cloud, is um, where the tropopause is. So that's why they sort of flatten out and make what we call the anvil shape. Now the stratosphere is the next layer, right? Let me look at the stratosphere back here. The stratosphere we're talking about, which is right there is the outer layer of the atmosphere overlying the troposphere. The air temperature is at first constant with altitude and then increases with altitude, right? Remember, we looked at the, at the picture here. It's constant, stays the same, and then the temperature rises right here. All right, here's a diagram of a thunderstorm. Remember, this is caused by the up uh, drafts. We get drafts upward, or a warm updraft notice. We see some, you may want to uh, sketch these or uh, maybe print them, is we get this draft is the uh, as it rises up, and then it reaches, um, they have something called the overshooting gap. So this is the part that actually can make it briefly into the past the tropopause, and it makes this anvil top. This particular storm is moving in this direction. We're going to talk a little bit about a gust front in a little bit, and here's some new cloud formation. And then, of course, as it rises, eventually it's going to make a cold and downdraft, and you can start getting rain, hail, tornadoes, and all kinds of very exciting things. In fact, here's kind of a, a, even a more intricate diagram. Here again, we have, we have updraft. 
updrafts. The updrafts are causing a lot of things, but the tornadoes kind of here, they're not going to be at the front of the storm, but kind of in the middle of the storm. And here's sort of the front. This is the gust front portion of the storm. The hail tends to kind of come right in this stage, and then you get the heavy rain here, and then the light rain. So it's actually a series. So this storm, in this case, this storm is moving the opposite direction. It's moving in this direction. So you start out with the gust front right here. I had the gust front over here. I had it backwards. And then we get the light rain. Then you get the heavy rain. Then you get the small hail. Then you get the large hail. And then you can get a tornado. This is like in the worst case, right? And then you get debris because of the tornado. And then it eventually tails off. So there's kind of a whole sort of series of steps that a thunderstorm uh, goes through or can go through if it's you know really severe, uh, etc.